Once upon a time, the words, yes, we can, reverberated through every Democrat arena. It was the rise of Barack Obama, who presented himself as the savior. This was the moment when we began to provide care for the sick. This was the moment when the rise of the oceans began to slow and our planet began to heal. This was the moment, this was the time when we came together to remake this great nation. From his biblical prose to the Greek columns, Democrats were fainting like they were witnessing the second coming. Looks like somebody might have fainted up here. If we got uh, 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 some of the EMS, somebody. Don't worry about Folks do this all the time in my meetings. We got somebody who fainted. This is what happens. They'll be okay. Just give them a little room. Everybody bend their knees one time. They just don't lock your knees. The media breathed life into it, Barack. The Messiah. Messianic rhetoric infuses Obama rallies. Can a Messiah win twice? They made Obama sound like he could walk on water and depicted him that way. Photographers put halos on him. To them, Obama was a god. He made so many promises. We thought that he was going to be, I, I shouldn't say this at Christmas time, but the next Messiah. People have always had profound affection for political leaders. It's not scandalous. It's a testament to how strongly devoted bases can be. But it's been almost a decade since Democrats have felt the thrill go up their leg. No one ever fainted for Hillary or Biden. They miss it. And they're jealous when the other side has it. The New York Times infiltrated a Trump rally and said they witnessed a religious revival. Thousands of people have been lining up for hours to get inside, showing the endless devotion that these supporters have for the former president. One of the more striking ways we see this impassioned loyalty from Trump fans is at the end of his rallies, uh, where there's a sudden shift in tone, where it goes from very high energy into almost a, a solemn church-like atmosphere where Trump gives a, a 10 to 15 minute sermon, preaching to his crowd, his faithful flock of supporters. What we see are people almost in prayer. The net effect here is Trump has turned the Republican party into something resembling the Church of Trump. The New York Times went on to write this. The Trumpian flock is more likely to describe him as a modern version of Old Testament heroes like Cyrus or David. Morally flawed figures handpicked by God to lead profound missions aimed at achieving overdue justice or resisting existential evil. Now, revering Obama as a messiah was gleefully embraced, but Republicans praying at a Trump rally, now a dangerous religious cult. Suddenly, praying on the Bible was controversial. All Americans need a Bible in their home, and I have many. It's my favorite book. I'm proud to endorse and encourage you to get this Bible. We must make America pray again. Last week, the former president promoting a God Bless the USA Bible, which includes documents from America's founding. Trump partnering with Lee Greenwood, whose famous song, God Bless the USA, you hear playing at his rallies. This isn't out of the ordinary. During World War II, FDR sent signed Bibles to American soldiers. He even wrote a foreword to the New Testament. Jimmy Carter is selling a signed Lessons from the Bible book online. It's over 300 bucks. Oh, and then there's the Jimmy Carter signed Bibles that are available right now for purchase for 98 bucks. Trump's 59.99. Today, Democrats are acting like Trump committed an act of blasphemy. It is so insulting to me as one who grew up in the church and have been a preacher since I was a boy, for him to not only come with selling Bibles during Holy Week. I mean, this is the week that we, that believe in Christ, the real Christ. Donald Trump speaks and is the most divisive, cruel person in the history of the presidency. And obviously it's an exact opposite of what Jesus' message was in this. Donald Trump does this and then is backed by certain people of the faith. It just exposes the rot 
that exists in faith communities in America. Mm -hmm. When fascism comes to America, it will be waving a flag and holding a Bible. Yeah. That is what we are looking at right now. Yeah. Remember that in November. It's blasphemous. Okay, are we really looking at Al Sharpton to tell us what God wants? And the media is acting like it's tacky for Trump to promote the word of God. Biden iced out his illegitimate grandchild is helping keep his crackhead tax cheating son out of prison while his dog bites the White House staff and trans activists flash us on July 4th. Let's not get into a battle over who's tackier. Trump's a salesman. Is the media saying there should be less Bibles in America? It's probably the best thing Trump's ever sold. I'll accept Trump wine, which is divine. Now, the left's livid because they know Trump's strong bond with voters mean they'll buy anything he sells. Trump could sell Biden bumper stickers, and the base would buy it, and just hand them out as gag gifts. We were told Biden was going to try to win over Trump voters, but he's not. He's calling them ultra-maga Bible thumpers. Chris Matthews says, if you buy a Bible from Trump, you're not Christian, you're in a cult. I don't know if the Democrats have really thought through this campaign and what they're up against. This guy's calling himself God. God. Hello. Yeah. And if he can get away with that, then he is truly a cult. I mean, anything Trump does, Democrats have to do the opposite. This weekend, Trump wished America a happy Easter. Over at the White House, Biden wished us happy Trans Day of Visibility. On Transgender Day of Visibility, we honor the extraordinary courage and contributions of transgender Americans and reaffirm our nation's commitment to forming a more perfect union, where all people are created equal and treated equally through their lives. Democrats went full trans this Easter weekend. Today on Trans Day of Visibility, we celebrate the trans individuals in our communities and recognize their struggle, the struggle for recognition and increasingly survival. From all of us here at the Department of Education, happy Trans Day of Visibility. Each year on March 31st, we celebrate transgender Americans and all that they have accomplished. Happy Transgender Day of Visibility. This morning, Binder was blindsided by the controversy and it tried to explain how the calendar works. Watch. Really um, so surprised by the misinformation that's been out there around this, and I want to be very clear. Every year for the past several years, on March 31st, Trans Transgender Day of Visibility is marked. And as we know, for folks who understand the calendar and how it works, Easter falls on different Sundays, right? Every year. And this year, it happened to coincide with trans, uh, Transgender Visibility Day. And so that is the simple fact. That is what has happened. That is where we are. I would love to hear Binder explain leap year. But here's how this whole thing gets started. 15 years ago, trans psychotherapist Rachel Crandall Crocker started Trans Visibility Day. Here she is. I'm Rachel Crandall Crocker. I am founder and organizer of the International Transgender Day of Visibility. Anyone can create their own day. Tomorrow is National Peanut Butter and Jelly Sandwich Day. We're serious. It's also National Ferret Day. It's also National Do-It-Yourself Day, which Gutfeld celebrates far too often. Barack Obama was president for the first eight transgender days of visibility. One of those days was Easter Sunday, and Obama didn't put out any proclamations about it. Those only started under Biden. And the geniuses at the Biden White House are either too stupid to realize what they're doing, or they're doing it on purpose. Biden was asked about, why'd you do it? And he said, quote, I didn't do it. So he's either a puppet or he's lying. A primetime doesn't care if trans Americans want to have a day to themselves. Have a day. Have a month. That's what Pride Month's for, right? June? But we discovered trans days take up half the year. They have Transgender Day of Visibility, Transgender Day of Remembrance, Transgender Awareness Week, Trans Awareness Month, Transparent Day, International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia, and Transphobia. Pride Month, LGBTQ History Month, LGBTQ Health Awareness Week, International Day of Pink, Day of Silence for Transbullying, Lesbian Visibility Week, 
Agender Pride Day, Harvey Milk Day, Pansexual and Panromantic Awareness Day, Stonewall Day, International LGBTQ Plus Day, International Non-Binary People Day, International Drag Day, Bisexual Awareness Week, Celebrate Bisexuality Day, International Lesbian Day, National Coming Out Day, Gender Fluid Visibility Week, International Pronoun Day, Spirit Day, Intersex Awareness Day, Intersex Day of Remembrance. I could go on. They dominate the calendar. We can't have one day for Easter. And if we raise the issue, we're pouncing. Trans Easter is now a thing, but Trump asking for prayer is tacky. I don't know about you, but I don't think the trans community is suffering from a lack of visibility. <laughs> it's all we see. They were selling trans nutcrackers in Target this Christmas, which I enjoyed gifting to my producers during the office Secret Santa. The country talks more about trans than the border. Now, it's a combination of a cry for attention and a cry for help. We're handing over bathrooms, the English language, and now half the calendar? After bending over backwards, what did we get? On Easter Sunday in Tennessee, a trailer full of Bibles was set on fire in front of a church. Now, we're not accusing anyone trans of doing this, but if these were Korans in flames, there'd be another White House proclamation or a trans flag torched hate crime front page news. Easter service at St. Patrick's Cathedral here in Manhattan was disrupted by pro-Palestinian activists. If we've learned anything from history is that communism rooted religion out so people would worship the state instead of God. So be proud of your faith and don't let anybody demonize you. Never be ashamed by what you believe in your heart. And happy Easter. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.